Go on, count it in. This is a power drive Macon lifter. At the back we have a tiller head which controls the steering and the power drive unit which propels the, propels the unit forwards and backwards. At the front of the unit we have a fork carriage with our forks at the bottom. This is the part of the unit that lifts and lowers the Matcons. Uh, it also has a side shift function. The machine is rated at a thousand kilograms um, and uh, if we come back to the back of the unit I'll drive it into the load. Now this is done on the tiller head. The tiller head has some safety functions which I'll point out to you before I start. Uh, if you leave the tiller head up in the, completely up in the vertical it depresses a micro switch at the front and this disables all drive to the unit. The same goes for the horizontal. So to drive the unit I'm going to turn the ignition key and using the butterfly switch here I'm just going to gently push it forwards and drive into my pallet. Now I'm in position, I'm ready to lift the load. I can do this using the buttons on the panel here and I also have a lift button on the tiller head. Now I have my load lifted, uh, I can side shift left or right. I do this again just by pressing one of the buttons on, on the panel. It's worth noting at this point that if the forks are not central in the carriage the lower function doesn't lower fully to the ground. This is to stop the load clashing with the unit legs. So if I want to lower it fully to the ground all I need to do is simply lift it again, side shift it back into the middle until the green light comes on the panel and then lower it to the floor. Now to the back panel. The first thing I want to show you on the back panel is the emergency stop. If we press this button down it cuts all power to the unit, none of the functions including the drive work. To reset it, simply lift it up, power is restored and the unit is functional again. Here we have the battery meter. This shows the condition of the battery and how much charge it has. This light here is a charging indicator light and indicates when the unit is charging. You charge the unit by plugging it in to main supply in this socket. It's worth noting as well that when it's plugged in and charging the drive and all functions on the unit are disabled. Coming back to the tiller head, when the tiller head is in the vertical position it depresses this micro switch here and disables all drive to the unit. It also does the same on another micro switch when it's horizontal. The tiller head itself is sprung on a gas ram which automatically springs it back into the vertical position when released. On the tiller head we have a key switch here which enables and disables the, the power to the unit so I can simply turn that, pull the key switch out and the unit is disabled. Here we have several buttons on the tiller head. We have a horn, we have a lower and a lift button. This switch here is the butterfly switch which operates the throttle. Now I can push it forwards and the unit will drive forward. If I pull it backwards the unit drives backwards. And on the top of the tiller head finally we have an emergency device which when depressed drives the unit forwards again. This is to protect the operator so if the unit is reversed into them and this button gets pressed it drives back away from them uh, safely. Moving now to the functions on the machine. 
As you can see here, we have all our functions laid out on our panel. We have a lift and a lower button. So to lift the machine, we simply press the lift button. And the lower works in the same way. Up here we have two safety devices. These devices are here to ensure that in the, in the result of failure, hydraulic or electrical, they actually catch the carriage and secure the load in position. You can see these working, so when, when I press lift or lower, they actually pull away from the unit, disengage and allow the carriage to lift up and down. Moving to our side shift function, as you can see here we have a side shift function for left and a side shift for right. And this light here indicates when the forks are in the middle of the carriage. This is important because if we need to lower the carriage all the way to the floor, the forks need to be central to fit between the legs. So I'll just move the carriage slightly and, and you can see the light coming on. And as you can see, the lights come on, we can now lower it fully to the floor. It's also worth noting at this stage, when the carriage is fully on the floor and the forks are central, the side shift function will not work. This again is to stop the forks clashing with the legs on the unit. 